Cheerio. I hope everyone's well. I hope that you watched part one and enjoyed it. And I cut it in half because it was just getting too much. I mean, that's a long video. And remember me, my videos used to be six minutes and 12 minutes. But okay, this is where we are. Well, we don't know where we're going next. But remember that FML thing that was going around and Shannon, was, her kids weren't totally diagnosed. So she had been, she was doctor shopping again and she couldn't find a doctor that would agree. But so let's just get started. Apparently, Shannon wanted Chris to confront his father about the nut issue, and Chris was a avoiding it. Reluctant would have been a better word. After he did call his father, he said he wanted them to see the girls. She said that was a reward they didn't deserve and not fair to the girls. It is horrendous when people use children against other people. You know, there's divorce. It happens all the time. They'll use a kid against the other. You, why punish the children? Because you're annoyed with the parents. The, his parents had a lot of patience. You know something else, guys? Remember this. That night in that room was it August 15th, the night Chris was arrested. He told his father Shannon did it. Well, they never spoke to Chris one time until right at the sentencing. So this, that entire time, they fully believed what their son had told them. You know, Chris has no reason to lie to his parents. I mean, you understand what I mean. Obviously, he has a reason. I didn't really mean that way. They don't have any reason to believe that he may be lying to them. That is a better way to put it. So you remember that. I can't imagine that family. Both families. I mean, obviously, the Ruzex, it's even worse. They lost their daughter. But you know, everybody lost people. Chris makes one phone call to his dad today in over four weeks and he wants them to see the kids tomorrow. I told him over my dead body, they don't get to disrespect me and him and his kids and get rewarded. It took me over a week to get Bella to change her attitude with me. Cindy had her disrespecting me. His dad said, yes, I want to I just don't feel I should reward them for their actions. It's not fair to my kids. Do you really think you know, the girls could no longer trust their grandparents and needed them to earn trust back? No, remember these girls witnessed Shannon run down the hallway of the house at Cindy and get in her face. The girls saw that. I mean, Cindy really should have called police. You think about that. Cindy absolutely could have called police and had Shannon arrested for that. I and mean, that's assault. And yet she didn't. And you know that Cindy didn't care for her. But Cindy could have done that to Shannon, but she didn't. Okay. During this debacle, Shannon was expressing how she was the one who cared about the girl's well-being. And Chris and his parents were unconcerned about safety and irresponsible. It's ridiculous. They raised two children perfectly fine. Nut job. Hmm. What happens when narcissists become parents? They view their children as part of themselves. They refuse to tolerate anything less than perfection. Hmm. He's so worried about not talking to them, he's going to lose us. Indeed, Shannon spoke, I'm sorry. Indeed, Shannon spoke of her and the girls as a unit that Chris, his parents, could either do right by or lose. In this post praising Chris, she refers to her and the girls as women. Obviously a joke, but telling. Happy Husband Appreciation Day. I couldn't imagine a better man for us. You spoil us with love and attention. You put up with three impatient, demanding women in the house. You work so hard every day to provide for us. I love you so much. And yet I'm committing financial homicide against our family. You know, there's a picture 
where Shannon and the both girls are sitting on the chair and Chris is by himself on the couch and she takes a picture of it and brags about it. Well, it's obviously who they love the most or something. Shannon did suffer from antisocial dis- personality disorder. Okay. Narcissistic and antisocial traits sometimes coexist. However, to complicate matters in certain cases, there are positive correlations between narcissism and antisocial personalities, and the conditions can be comorbid, which means they can sometimes coexist. Although NPD is associated with affective issues, such as depression and anxiety, both co-occur with drug and alcohol use problems, albeit for different reasons. I've already said, I, I, I don't believe Shannon got hooked on the pain meds because there was an oxy in her basement. And if she used pain meds, there's not going to be any extras in the basement. And they didn't appear to drink very often. In APD, it is part of their risk-taking and impulsivity, while in NPD, it may be self-medication or impressing a crowd. So, although there is a little bit of overlap between NPD and APD, the symptoms rarely co-occur sufficiently to justify a dual diagnosis. Well, dang, that was a doozy. I think the word rural is hard to say because I am a rural carrier. And I was saying it today and I was like, rural, rural. Okay, let's just see about this. These are the symptoms of antisocial personality disorder. Disregard for right and wrong. I, obviously, this is a good one. Persistent lying or deceit to exploit others. What did this woman do online every day? Remember, she used her children to do that as well. Being callous, cynical, and disrespectful of others. We just got done talking all about how she's so disrespectful of his parents. Using charm or wit to manipulate others for personal gain or pleasure. Okay, well, she did that again with her MLM. Arrogance, a sense of superiority, and being extremely opinionated. Definitely, definitely. That's part of the, got to be driving that Lexus, you know. Recurring problems with the law, including criminal behavior. Well, she didn't have that issue, but they were having problems with money. They were being sued. Uh, they were about to lose their house. So in that aspect, you know, I, I would kind of include that in there. Repeatedly violating the rights of others through intimidation and dishonesty. Chris, you are not letting them see your parents. This dishonesty. I walked in and there was a bowl full of nuts on the counter. I don't believe that. And Shannon herself has peanut butter in her pantry at a level that Cece can get. You know what's funny is these are just the symptoms. And so far, she's pretty much hit all of these. Okay, there's a good one. Impulsiveness or failure to plan ahead. Hmm, where were they going to live on September, or August 29th? You know, because the date had come. They're, they're, they were done. They were losing their house. Hostility. Significant irritability, agitation, aggression, or violence. Okay, well, that's exactly. She got violent with Cindy that day in the house. You know, a lot of hostility. Lack of empathy for others and lack of remorse about harming others. Think about when she made Bella get smacked in the face with the whipped cream. Bella didn't want it. You know, Bella was humiliated, embarrassed. Meanwhile, there's 147 people freaking watching. Unnecessary risk-taking or dangerous behavior with no regard for the safety of self or others. Ah, I don't know about that one. So she didn't, I didn't think she was a very attentive mother. Uh, but remember, these are symptoms. She doesn't have to have all of them. Poor or abusive relationships. Yeah, she had a great relationship with her in-laws, didn't she? Failure to consider the negative consequences of behavior or to learn from them. They had declared bankruptcy three years prior. Remember, they had to take a bankruptcy class. They didn't learn anything from that. Being consistently irresponsible and repeatedly failing to fulfill work or financial obligations. Ba-boom-boom. Boom. Oh my goodness. It's creepy. While it's rare to show both disorders, Shannon seemed to meet all the criteria for both. 
Okay. Shannon received many speedometer violations. Oh, I didn't know that. So, hold on. Oh, I, I heard about the embezzlement. You guys remember that? Okay. In the original document dump, Chris Watts mentioned during his interrogation that there was some suspicion that Shannon Watts had embezzled from her boss in North Carolina. I'm surprised this hasn't been brought up before. Did that have anything to do with their abrupt move to Colorado? Uh, so look, the moderator didn't like that. She's like, the criminal history of Shannon doesn't matter the case. Let's move on. Uh, so what? People want to talk about it. Uh, Chris killed her. Well, he had to have a reason. Maybe her criminal history was part of the reason. It is very vital. I didn't know she had a lead foot. I do not. I haven't had a speeding ticket in decades. At thought-provoking video, so someone wrote this to this channel. Dirty South later accused Shannon of stealing from multiple sources, including donations from some sort of medical research that they were making collections for. I'm not surprised. How'd she buy that $500,000 house that she didn't need? That's the worst part. She absolutely didn't need all that space at all. How arrogant are you? Shannon, uh, you know what? And she lost money on it, left it fully furnished, So and didn't learn from that. Goodness, she was about to lose another house. I believe another reason she took Chris to Colorado was to separate him from his family, and probably she needed a new round of doctors. So, Shannon also seemed to have genuine somatic symptoms, migraines, and neck tension, that tension if not the medical conditions she claimed. Okay, well, she didn't. Unfeigned bodily complaints are associated with antisocial PD. Some researchers suggest it is because of the effects of high levels of negative emotionality and related to risk-taking behaviors. During pregnancy, vulnerability to symptoms would have been increased. Well, I'm surprised she didn't claim to have fibromyalgia because I don't think there's any way to specifically diagnose that. Huh. Uh, how tacky. You don't tell people you have lupus when you know you don't. She may have genuinely believed she had conditions that explained her chronic physical disgust, discomforts, but other motivations, whoa, misleading claims about ailments and symptom alleviation is regularly raised as an issue when researching health-related MLMs. This would come more easily to a person with APD. So that's, you know, think about Shannon. Oh, Bella's been sick for four days and Celeste won't run around. She's a monster. But I'm a great mom because of Thrive. And remember, I have lupus. You know, a, a few, and I think in the last video, Shannon talks about she took Cece to get her thyroid checked. I wish I had my phone on me. I would see if you know what's involved with getting your thyroid checked. Do they have to stick needles in you and look at your blood as well? But she put these children through all these unnecessary medical procedures. Ah, so disgusting. She belonged to all those support groups so she could network and sell Thrive. I knew an MLMer who did the same thing. Rheumatoid arthritis, fibromyalgia. Totally makes sense. That's why her kids always had to be sick. Baby number two sick. Celeste, day three of high temps. Bella, day one. We have a semi-blizzard outside and my body isn't hurting. And with little sleep because last night because of the girls, I'm feeling good and I'm able to take good care of them. Thrive, two sidekicks. Did I just not say that 45 seconds ago? Ugh, the woman is a sicko. Shannon says she's dizzy, lighthearted headed and it'd be nauseated okay lightheaded body numb tingling itching all over it's weird 11 p.m an hour later i start to pee and i vomit about 30 <clears throat> minutes later <laughs> you're such a jackass massive instant migraine came out of nowhere did you guys hear him he just burped took a metrics around 2 30 a.m usually gets rid of migraine within 20 minutes it's still just as bad right now Maybe one and a half hours of sleep, and I just vomited again. 5.30. Still lightheaded, shaky, blurry vision, and exhausted. So I wish that we had 
the metadata to find out what day she sent this text and then look at her social media post that same day. You know, I, did she have a notebook to keep track of all of her lies? In this video, Shannon takes delight in a spray session that is clearly too intense for a small child, especially one prone to illness. Bella was a good sport, but eventually had to make a fuss for it to stop. Oh, let's shock her. This is something she posted. Her child being humiliated. Again, online. Here is something else. We know that Shannon had a Facebook page already set up for these girls. And I guess when they were older, she was going to hand them the password. Well, all this stuff you're putting online is online forever. You know, they want to go to college. They, they want to have friends and not be humiliated. I mean, Bella's friends will be like, man, your mom really bullied you when you were a kid. I hate this. This one makes me sad. Yeah. Well, you're spraying. Save me. So stop. Shannon wants Cece to come see Santa. Uh, the, we've already gone over this one. Okay, but she, she asked you to stop. Why don't you stop? Yet you're still spraying her. And she wasn't just spraying her in the legs. She was spraying her in the face. You know what? I don't even want to show it again. Ugh. This is great. Child's running away. Crawling, obviously. She, no, Mommy. I have a headache because of this stupid pigtail on the top of my head as well. Why don't you put the stinking camera down? Oh, there, there's the, uh, the ten foot tree. They have five Christmas trees in this house. Five Christmas trees. Mortgage isn't paid. You know the electric bills just getting paid at the cutoff each time. Obviously, the direct TV bill has to be paid, but uh, five Christmas trees. Yeah, why aren't the lights on the tree? I guess they are now. Hey Santa, where's your phone? My husband's a genius. Say Merry Christmas. My, my husband's a genius. What a nasty person. Say, no, we know what you, I want to say. She wants to say, Mom, F off. I don't want you to tell me what to say. What are you, mouse tongue or something? You feel more like your puppet than you are their child. Exactly. Say, I have. Uh, she doesn't want to say any of it. Look at that obnoxious face. Yep, Cece's hysterical. Bella doesn't want to be there. Yep, Cece's still hysterical. Great, yep. A lot of people say taking your kids to see the Easter Bunny and Santa and stuff is abuse. I don't rock them. Oh, that's right. She used baby wise. You guys know what baby wise is, right? It means you're on a schedule. Uh, if you want the child to sleep at 6 p.m. until 6 a.m., you put the child in the bed, close the door, and you let the child cry it out. They took naps from 12 to 2 every day. Same thing. You don't worry about it. Now listen. I'm not a proponent of, you know, rocking your kid to sleep. I think it's a terrible bad habit. I have a little friend who just had a baby, and she made a comment about that. And I said, oh, honey, you don't want to do that. Your, your child will only be able to go to sleep that way. So, you know, I let the kids cry. You know, I didn't let them get hysterical like this. But Joe would cry just for a couple minutes, and then he was asleep. We didn't have any problems. I didn't have any problems. The kids all slept through the night pretty early. Okay, she's going to tell us better what Baby Wise is. Baby Wise is a program developed by a couple of people that involves letting babies cry as you control their eating and sleeping. Getting your children hysterical. A central element of Ezo's plan in Baby Wise is feeding newborns on a firm schedule, controlled by parents, rather than on demand. You know what I mean? When the child is actually hungry. I have to say, my mother and I got closer, you know, once I had the first kid. Uh, I think she would have probably called me out 
and said something to me about this. You know, I, I just, it's uncomfortable. Newborns should be nursed when they show signs of hunger. Crying is a late indicator of hunger. So. The program's firm stand against nursing on cue is refuted by a doctor. There is no evidence for any species, including the human being, that forced scheduled feeding is in any way superior to demand feeding. Adults would never accept that. Well, I guess they accept it in prison, but they have commissary and snacks. So they still, if they're hungry, they eat when they're, they're hungry. Mm. This breaks my heart. Babies cry for thirst in addition to hunger. Babywise advice linked to dehydration and failure to thrive. Who was failure to thrive? Oh, that little girl, Lacey Spears in New York, who killed her five-year-old. Uh, she ended up getting sentenced to 25 years in prison. I've written her two letters or so. She's never written me back. But she's a nut job. There's a Lacey Spears Dateline episode you can find. If I remember, I'll put it below. The sound quality is terrible. But this chick is a creep. So when you're not feeding or giving your child food and drink when they need it, they dehydrate. Wow. A Christian psychologist warns the method does not respect actual development in children. Uh, I agree. They're taught to obey at levels that are not consistent with their capabilities. If they're hungry and they can't eat, well, they're not. A, that doesn't make sense to them. It's a self-serving program confuses personal and religious values with science and strictly controlled infant care with successful parenting. And then Watts weren't very Christian people. all these warnings about baby wise years ago when all this happened I looked it up I'd never heard of it so if you oh this is child abuse carried out by religious leaders and their followers what about the politicians why don't you bring up that child abuse you guys know that Oprah was on Epstein's plane 20 times or something I better be careful with how I say this and she also ran a girls school I think in Africa in one year, 12 or 20 little girls from this school were kidnapped. And nobody has ever heard anything about them since. I wonder what happened to them. Hmm, interesting. And just like my Christmas decorations, someone did not hang themselves. Truly, I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Be innocent and put your faith in the Lord. There are some mothers in the public eye who are baby-wise advocates. Well, let's see who they are. Jill Duggard. Oh, isn't she the one who was molested by her brother? I finally just read about this family. I didn't know who this family was. I didn't know they had a television show and stuff. But I don't really watch TV almost at all. My television is on for sports. Uh... But I read about this family, and the parents knew what was going on. They even built the house with the boys on the one wing and the girls on the other wing because they knew what was going on. And this family's creepy. And then I read about the brother who just got sentenced to 20-some years or something. He was a sicko. Oh, she's, she's that little child. Look at the pain on her face. And what do you, whoops, what do you know? Uh... Shannon put the picture up there. Does that look like a happy baby? Man, that swaddle is tight. Where's, what's going on there? Are those her feet? But does that look like a happy baby? Why would you post these pictures online? You post cute, fun pictures. You post pictures when your kid gets ice cream all over his face. You don't post... Uh. Okay, Bonnie Holen. Them to play. I just watch them even if they sit there and scream. Okay, I've never heard of this girl. She's obviously advocating baby-wise. I don't know if she's famous or not. Uh, 
I like her eye makeup. Looks nice. Cute, cute little lady. Her hair looks cute. She said, I just sit there and let them scream. Don't you have a heart? You want them to behave. Kids will learn anything if you just teach them. Oh my goodness. Don't you have compassion? Oh, it makes me sick. To nurture or nourish means to sustain with food or nutriment. Supply what? Supply with what is necessary for life, health, and growth. To cherish, foster, keep alive, to strengthen and build up. In terms of parenting, we nourish our children when we provide for them physically, emotionally, and spiritually. The class, classic example of the effects of the absence of nurture were orphans in communist countries who sat in their cribs silent because they had long ago learned that no one came when they cried. Their long-term social problems prompted some of the first serious observations and discussions of attachment. Well, isn't that just so sad? We've all seen the photos of those Russian orphanages. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I was going to say something. Oh, are, your children need discipline as well. You know, I, I brought discipline into this home, and they respect me. And, but they need that. Kids need to be told no. That's how they know you love them. If you let the kid run the life, they, they don't respect you. They don't know what's going on. I know somebody, a divorced woman, who has the 13-year-old kid sleeps in the master bedroom in the house, and she sleeps on the couch because that's what he told her he needs. And so she sleeps on the damn couch. This method is also reported to interfere in the bond between parent and child, leading to attachment issues, of course. It's just so sad. So she's going to... Tell us how great Baby Wise isn't Christian. These, still, these stills from a few minutes of... Okay, she's a Christian. Stand up for yourself. If you don't hit this jerk back and would never have tell a parent their young child to hit the jerk back. You do not tell your child to hit someone back. She doesn't look good there. Are those fake eyelashes? You know that every man in the world wants a girl with long-ass fake eyelashes. Not. You want me to slap you? You just said that. She said that, and she actually said it, but she also posted it. Want me to slap you? Hey, go sit down. Those are my bon. Oh, my goodness. See, I don't like that you're, he's touching your butt. Why don't you close the refrigerator? You're like, Cody, your mom's hot. Why, why are you talking to children like this? There's a group of people in our world that are sexualizing children now. You tri why would you? Ex Here's the thing. Why do the drag queens want to be around the children? Have you asked yourself that question? There's a lot of pedophiles in the school system. This unsound approach to babies called Baby Wise made sense to Shannon, who wanted everything on her terms. She left the first husband because he questioned her. Chris says that in the interrogation. He says, well, that's why she couldn't stay with the first one. So... People are so hateful that she is spending a few minutes a day recording. A few minutes a day recording? Which is her job. <laughs> they don't have that in quotes either. Yet most people leave their kids in childcare for 8 to 10 hours a day. See their kids for maybe an hour before bedtime and think of themselves as good parents. This lady stayed home with her kids. Made videos for work with her kids right there. Okay, that is a lie. Okay, here's someone replied. They had the girls in full-time daycare costing $2,500 a month. That's exactly what they did. It says, in order to make money with Lavelle, you have very long hours. Their finances were in a mess. Uh, but another thing, the recovering hung bot says this, and there's a girl that was a big up in beach body as well. And she's chunky now, which I don't understand. But um, she's a beautiful, beautiful woman. She says the same thing. It's 24-7. Every moment you are awake, you're working. She, there's a LuLaRoe woman that one time had someone, she lived on the East Coast and the other person lived on the West Coast or something, and she's up at 1 o'clock in the morning trying to help this person, you know, because of the time difference. It's a 24-700 job. 24-700, you know what I'm saying? But another thing, this this uh, person says, most people leave their kids in childcare for 8 to 10 hours a day and see their kids for an hour before bedtime. Okay, well, let's figure it out. 
Chris picked the girls up around 4.15 to 4.30 from daycare. Chris picked them up. Shannon didn't. And then at 6 o'clock or 6.30, the girls went to bed. I think it was 6.30 on the dot. So those girls were home for two hours with mom. Remember, Chris says they would go home and eat dinner. What would they eat for dinner? Butter noodles and chicken nuggets. What? Aren't you having roast beef, mashed potatoes, and broccoli? Or uh, I made Kung Pao chicken the other night. Last night we had meatloaf. And we got the meatloaf mix from the organic butcher. And oh my goodness, it was yum, yum, yummy. But so this bottom person down here says, get off your high horse. You aren't perfect either. What? She didn't say anything about her not being perfect. All she did was comment to this girl to say, actually, what you're saying is not true. Yeah. Remember, when Shannon saw the girls for 45 minutes in the morning before she took them to daycare. And I won't call it school. It's daycare. Many are still under the impression Shannon looked after her girls full time. In fact, they were enrolled in early school. It's exactly right. You know, the Obama wanted to make government preschool. We don't want the government getting a hold of our children. Every morning I drop the kids off and Target isn't even open. I get one kid looking the other and the other loses focus. Kids are back in school. Bella starts pre-kindergarten and Celeste starts early preschool. Why don't you just stay come home and have them be a mommy? 7 a.m. and I'm on my way to drop the girls off at school. 7 a.m. and she's taking the school, the girls to school. Cleaned bathrooms. Okay, I don't believe that. I'm going to say she wiped the counters down after they brushed their teeth because Chris does all the cleaning. Two loads of laundry done and cleaned the kitchen and just drinking my candy cane lifestyle mix 50 minutes later. That's a bold faced lie. Chris did every drop of laundry in that house. And there's other posts where Shannon brags about that. She even brags that she has him hang the clothes color coordinated right see that over here this was her idea of being a super mom who has, still has time to buy presents yeah no doubt why are the girls going to daycare at 7 a.m 7 a.m to 4 p.m nine and a half hours it's 7 a.m and i already have kids dressed and off to school again already off to school two loads of laundry done and i've dealt with emotional toddlers this morning right because you're because you're a lousy mother. Boy, oh boy, I love me some Thrive. Mood and patience support on point today. I even showered this morning before they woke up at 6 a.m. Kids are off to school. Mama has tons to do. Vanilla lifestyle mix plus cafe this morning. Disgusting. Do you really think a candy cane flavored shake tastes good? I don't. Celeste was emotional this morning. Okay, so what's the most important thing? Is to tell everybody and put a picture of it. Every time a parent dropped off, she cried. But after school started, she had a blast. She was exhausted after eight and a half hours of daycare. Eight and a half hours. This child has a full-time job. Bella's first day at school yesterday. She's extremely exhausted. We picked her up. And exhausted today, even after her 13 hours of sleep last night which tells me the girls went to bed before 6.30 because they have to be at school by 7, okay? So I'm going to say first day of school, they came home at 8, drugged up the kids and got them in bed by 5 or 5.30. Tomorrow is day two of daycare. She made me sit in back with her so she could lay on me. Oh, aren't you just the mother of the stinking year? Okay, I just said this. Overall, she didn't spend much time with her girls. She was apparently firm about their 6.30 bedtime. On the weekends, Chris appeared to be the main caregiver, and while Shannon took trips, leaving the girls with him, the reverse never happened. All this would have explained her making statements like she's going to say. Uh, she complained she didn't want him at the car dealership because he had to work Saturdays. Well, daycare is not open on Saturdays, or you know those girls would have been there. And... Apparently, she went on at least one trip a month. Can you even imagine, Chris? Play, um, mommy at the zoo 
I'm going to go play mommy at the zoo. Haven't we already talked about this? Um, she, they didn't go to the zoo. Where's the pictures of the damn giraffes and they elephants? Have network adventure to the zoo with just these two. They will brave the zoo today by myself with my wild uh, kiddos. When Shannon did spend time with the girls, she seemed uncomfortable with the intimacy and hands-on approach proper mothering entails. Her personality disorders controlled and limited her and created a blockage between her and others. She didn't even, she didn't see what she was doing. She was that blind and it's clear where this stuff would not have been posted. She wouldn't have called them monsters and play mommy. Sadly for Shannon herself's well-being, she did not play with the girls. Toys, activities, sports. Okay, there are no toys in that house. I guess they're all upstairs in that playroom. But uh, the neighbor said, you know the ha woman who lived a few houses down and got up and went to the gym that morning? She said she always saw the father pulling the girls around in their radio flyer wagon. She ne said, I never saw the mother. Rarely, rarely saw the mother. In a vision board activity she did with Bella. This is a three or four year old child. Your three or four year old child doesn't have, her vision is to eat, have a nice day with her family, goodness. Shannon emphasized dance lessons in Disneyland for Bella, who started as a vision to play with her mom and dad. So, Shannon told Bella to put dance lessons in Disneyland on her vision board. But what did Bella put on her vision board? She put play with mom and dad. So that's what Bella wanted. They're playing. No pictures of mom playing at the toys or on the swing set. Shannon regularly expressed, even during pregnancy, her fondness for alcohol. Okay, so I don't know about this. I don't, I don't agree. Hey, we'll, we'll see right here, but I don't agree. Okay, so what? So what? She posted a... Uh, there's a golf club that you can fill with booze, okay? Okay, I guess so. She, yes, please. Okay, well, so there's two. How's everything going? Okay, how about you? Could be better. Chris is bothered by his family's shit that I'm paying for it. What? Family shit. Oh. I need a stiff drink. Well, maybe she just did an excellent job of not ever posting herself drinking online. I mean, I've done some videos where I got a nice little buzz going. She, I don't remember seeing any of those, so. From the Coloradian, Shannon's blood alcohol content at the time of autopsy was 0.128. But the DA says that does not indicate she had consumed alcohol. Okay, I did a lot of research on this, and I am just a peasant. You know, science was my very, very worst sport, sport <laughs> subject. When I was halfway through my senior year in high school, my counselor came to me and said, hey, you never took earth science. You've got to get down to that earth science class. So there I was a senior in this class with all these freshmen. And one day we watched a movie, and I fell asleep during the movie. They turned the lights on, I was still asleep. My teacher walked over and called me out and I had drooled on the desk. And so there I'm a senior and he's making fun of me for all these freshmen because of my drool. And here I'm 52 and I still remember that. Oh, I was horrified. <laughs> oh, but this is what this is what I was saying. There's it's there's no way your body starts producing alcohol after you die. A lot of people said, "Well, that's part of the decomposition." What? No, it's not. Then almost then every person would have a blood alcohol level when they died. Do they? No. So common sense says she was boozing uh, out with her friends. Maybe she was secretly boozing. The article says anything above 0.12 has to be from pre-death alcohol consumption. Yeah, this, this is all this stuff. There, think about it. Every person in the world would have a blood alcohol level when they died, if that was true. How was Shannon's relationship life before meeting and marrying Chris? 
personality disorder make good relationships very difficult. Remember, she just walked out on that dude. She just left. She didn't say anything to him. She left. The first husband. I was in a bad relationship. All right, weren't you in a bad marriage? She was insecure and she didn't feel very good about herself. She got too much makeup on. It took her confidence and everything. Literally, it took everything. But then she had Thrive also. Central to Shannon's issues was a troubled self-esteem. Diagnosis of narcissist self-esteem regulation in patients. Oh, it's also linked with Munchausen. Breaking up with a narcissist. 12 things you need to know. Someone should have given that to Chris before he did this. Shannon was upset with Chris. Shannon was upset Chris seemed more concerned about losing the girls than losing her. Here's something she wrote. I fell deeper in love with you this summer. You fell out. That's not love. Love falls deeper in love when not out. You don't love me or you have a horrible way of showing it. You haven't fought for me this week. It's only the kids. Well, he doesn't like you. He likes the kids. Well, uh. I can't stand all the texting. I mean, Saul and I, we rarely text. He doesn't like memes, so I can't send him memes. What is wrong with somebody that doesn't like memes? Was there another reason Shannon had such limited time alone with the girls? Well, Ronnie Watts said that Shannon had her phone in her face the entire time. You know, one day Sandy went to the salon and I guess she told Shannon she'd be home at 3 o'clock. Well, driving home, the, her appointment ran a little late. Driving home, she realized she'd left her phone. So she went back. So she got home late. And apparently Shannon freaked out on Sandy. Families and comes. When Shannon's brother lived there, her parents and then Christina, Shannon had constant help with the girls. That's a good point. They also had a nanny they often used. And then, of course, the help of long days at school. Daycare. It really does not appear as if Shannon was alone with her children often. When Lavelle came on the scene, there were trips where Chris had the girls gone. These trips lasted anywhere from two to seven days, and they cost money. You know, she's paying for her airfare. They may have, I don't even think they cover the hotel. On, I guess on sometimes they do. It depends on the event. I've said this. I went to an event in Toronto, and one night I was walking with my husband, and I, just, I said, man, I wonder how much this cost, just that one party. And there was a guy right behind me, and he said, I'm on the planning. He said, tonight was $250,000. And we spoke to him. You know, this was an event where they had a celebrity come talk to us up in Toronto in the CN Tower. Uh, I conceived a child there, not in the CN Tower, but in Toronto. And in Toronto, they have, because it's so cold, they have a whole underground city. So you can get from one side of town to the other all downstairs. And there's, it's a mall down there and everything. Okay, okay, I'll shut up. Uh, everybody lived with the family. It was short-lived and lasted only one summer before he moved back to North Carolina. From the fall of 2014 until after Celeste was born, it was only Chris, Shannon, and Bella. Fall of 2015, Shannon's parents moved into the house. What else happened in the fall of 2015? Bankruptcy. They paid $1,000 a month. They took up residence in the unfinished basement with no bathroom for a period of 17 months, totaling four adults, two children, and several dogs, including the watchdog, Dieter. Uh, one of the Ruzek's dogs was 100 pounds as well. That's a big-ass dog. Remember, Shannon had an office and a full bathroom right on the main level. It's a your mother-in-law suite. Her parents could have lived there. She could have moved her office to the basement. In February 2017, Shannon's parents moved back to North Carolina, and apparently... Shannon's parents woke up that day planning on going to bed that night in Colorado. And Shannon and Sandy had a fight. And Sandy packed their stuff up and told Frank to get in the car. And they left abruptly that afternoon. And it was, it was apparently a, a bad, bad scene. So once her parents moved back, that's when the girls started full-time daycare. Celeste joined Bella at Primrose a couple of months later immediately after Shannon quit her job at the hospital. You remember her telephone. She was the telephone person. But she talked about she worked in healthcare. 
well, yeah, but I get to really working in telecommunications. In August 2017, Shannon's friend Christina, along with her small young daughter, flew from Hawaii. Christina was there to help, help take care of Bella and Celeste when Shannon would have neck surgery. Neck surgery that was not covered by insurance, which means it was not deemed medically necessary. Christina and her daughter lived with the Watts home for six weeks. During the next year, Shannon's parents visited several times. Their friend Cassie visited and stayed there with her family too. I know the Watts visited a couple times as well. There's a time that the two mothers had a little argument together. I mean, I guess Chris's mom had Bella upstairs or something, and Sandy was having none of that. My point is this. There are both numerous and legitimate reasons people believe it's possible that Shannon had an open CPS case at some point. Extensive documentation reveals two children, ages three and four and a half, sick for almost two years of their very short lives. The photos we covered did not include 2014 or 15, but there are many. Well, another... I saw another channel. You know, of course, Shannon posts every time she pees. But whenever they were out in public, it was always Shannon, Bella, Celeste, and somebody else. So there was always someone else. So I have heard that as well. It would make sense. That's why they, another reason they had to get a daycare. My understanding is Shannon was not allowed to stay by herself with the children due to a Colorado court order. The reasons for this order have never been made public. The Watts finances were in the tank, and by returning to North Carolina for the summer, Family could help with the girls. Thanks for your analysis of this story. So then Shannon's not alone with the girls. There's no daycare in the, you know, there's no primrose the summertime. I guess she could have enrolled them in regular daycare, but they didn't have four pennies to their name to enroll them in regular daycare. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. And the thing is, it's juvenile, so there's no, we can't get any court records about that. We have all seen public posts and videos that are alarming with regards to safety and care. It is unlikely that someone did not at some point alert Child Protective Services. I, I agree. But we don't know. And we'll never know. Right? If you... Some possessions you... Positions you have to record... Report if you suspect abuse. Our little ninja, master splinting, love watching her sleep. Um, her face is covered up with a blanket, you psycho. And those are, those, she doesn't have them in this one. Those bumper pads, they have determined that those are high, high sleep hazards. Oh, my girls, so she takes pictures of the girls suffocating themselves. I'm impressed there's no bumper tap, uh, pads. From now taken down channel, Miss Mensa. Miss Mensa was really, really mean to me one time. She called me a liar about something, and I proved her wrong. And then she said she never said it. And I'm thinking, hello, it's on tape. <laughs> so, more pictures. So, she walks into her baby's room first thing, and what does she have in her hand? Her stinking phone. Why don't you walk in and just take care of your child and leave your phone somewhere? My phone's inside right now. Chris Watts television interview. When I saw that declared a popular unlicensed television psychiatrist, I said... We're looking at a killer right here. Yeah, so did everybody. I mean, so did everybody. Many in the media decided Chris was guilty of all charges based on the strange demeanor he had in a TV interview before the bodies were found. That's what made it go nationwide so quickly, also, because he was really uncomfortable. I want those kids back. Yeah, nice smile on your face. As noted, inappropriate effects effect involves the display of reactions that do not match the situation you are in or even possibly your internal state. That smile is called duping delight. They don't even know they're smiling. Various conditions may be associated with inappropriate. Okay. Mental disorders. Well, so look, I believe that he suffered from PTSD. From He was in an abusive relationship. And he was in an abusive relationship for eight years. Depersonalization. I don't feel it's not right now. It's a nightmare I just can't wake up from. It's detachment. That's part of why he... Only one time he says, Shannon, Cece, Bella, you can hear this, come home. He only calls their names one time. That's what they do. They say those kids and things. 
An objective look at Chris's eight-year relationship with Shannon concludes it was abusive and would have had effects on him. Well, of course it was. It was scary. The thing about it is she posted it. You know, what are the short and long-term effects? It's just as serious as physical abuse. Uh, yelling, name-calling, insults. She used to insult Chris publicly online. Invading your privacy. We know she went through his phone. I have never, ever done that. I think that's really, really creepy. And if you go through someone's private stuff without them knowing, you may end up finding yourself with questions you're not able to answer. So think about that. Isolating you from family and friends. Making subtle, subtle or overt threats. What was her threat that morning? You're never going to see the kids again. Chris would have already been experiencing the effects of relationship abuse, in addition to the trauma of whatever did happen that morning and its aftermath. Right. He's a monster, but it's sad. He was an abused man. He was found to be lying on a polygraph about not knowing where the bodies were, but he was never asked if he had healed, hurt or killed Shannon or the girls. Why? Mm, that's interesting. The bottom line is that Chris Watts did not have the profile of a person who murders, nor an understandable motive, whereas Shannon did. There was no sensical modus operandi for Chris. There is an additionally no physical proof he killed the girls, or even Shannon, and potentially exonerating evidence is sealed away right now. I've already told you guys this channel believes Shannon killed the girls. Now the case is closed, so that evidence will never be released. And it's done. He's not getting out of prison. Offenders with personality disorder. I don't know, it's something like 40% of, prison, of prisoners have some sort of personality disorder. Do you know what? Over a third of them also have college degrees. I found that interesting. Chris never once considered suicide. It's well identified that murder is related to mental er illness. One's propensity towards murder is related to one's personality traits, not one's psychotic states. Colorado dad seeks DNA samples from daughter's body, but the judge rejects. I don't know why. Why would a judge ever reject something that could prove someone's story correct or incorrect? You always... Chris made a plea deal under conditions of extreme dearness and false premises, and his confession changed after the plea deal. All of this and more should render it non-binding. If the state wanted to render it non-binding, they could, because there's a line in every plea deal that says, if it turns out you are lying, we have a right to rescind this. Innocence is irrelevant, exactly. Right, they, they say take a plea deal and we won't give you the death penalty. Shannon told her friend she didn't want to have this baby. Shannon at one point talked about getting an abortion. Uh, I don't understand how you can have a child and then later have an abortion. I hope things get better. Me too, I can't feel like this. She's uncontrolled and unexpected anger. She can't handle that she is not winning. Revenge killers murder their children apparently out of a desire to cause harm to their ex-partner, the child's other parent. Okay, I'm not going to read this. No, I, I've told you, I, I don't believe she killed the children. And, and I really did consider it. I didn't just shut that down from the very beginning. There exists additional information related to how Shannon died and the transportation of the bodies that put into question much of what happened that morning. A new arrangement should be made so this can be put to rest. I think Chris is trying to get a new arrangement. Doesn't he only have three years and that time's up? I'll find out and let you know if there's he's trying to do anything. Okay, well, nothing is impossible with God. Luke 137. I agree. So, guys, thank you for watching. If you're still watching right now, I'm shocked. Thank you. I'm humbled. Hook me up. Hit like. Hit subscribe. God bless you. And God bless this America.